Guten Tag. A shout out to Michael Woodwig if he's watching this. Tales of Dusseldorf, 1978. I'll show what I've got to show in a little while. Uh, a very quick encapsulation of my trip to uh, Europe in 1978 after a 30 plus hour flight from Sydney to London with a few hiccups, no stopovers except for fuel. Um, wasn't bad. Singapore Airlines, the safest airline in the world, uh, along with Qantas at the time. Australian um, and Malaysian Airlines both had Australian pilots, so I recognise as the best in the world. Um, but then after my girlfriend and I had an argument, Regine, she's German, she took off to Dusseldorf and I had to try and catch up with her and make up. And uh, so I got to Heathrow, had an argument with a little English, officious little bastard he was, because when I arrived, when I went over there, I shaved all my hair off because I didn't want to catch... Um, lice off the English or the French so that's the passport I showed him that that was a photo taken in 73 or 74 when I got there in 78 I looked completely different so he got very shirty with me I got shirty with him anyway after that 30 hour flight which was pretty long but it was well good the scariest flight I've had in my life was London to Dusseldorf 30 minutes in a rattling British Airways junkie i was crapping myself it was shaking and shuddering and oh 30 minutes i couldn't wait to get out i get out at dusseldorf i'm instantly pulled aside by armed police but there's one other guy and we're taken off to be interrogated i think the pommy rang through to germany or something i don't know but i was pretty pissed i got really shitty with the cops the police and they said they're, they're cute this is the time of the beta meinhof terrorists you know and bombs and murders and things so they, i got really pissed off because the guy they they had in front of me was jonesing you know he's obviously a speed freak and he was i was just drunk and belligerent and they sort of caught, accusing me of being a terrorist and i said i said you gotta be fucking joking you've ever heard of an australian terrorist this is a long time ago okay anyway they sort of let me go i think i was tailed for a while because we were sort of living in a squat with anarchists and hippies and the police raided a few times. It was very interesting, very, very interesting time I had in Dusseldorf. Um, uh, the, the, my girlfriends, I caught up with her, we made up, and we, we moved in to this squat with her friend, school friend. Um, and her brother ran a bar down in Outstadt in uh, Dusseldorf. And he was a funny guy. We, he said, come down, and I've heard Aussies can drink. I'll shout your drink. So I went down, and he's, he's in his little bar dressed in a full-on SS uniform, the genuine deal. He had two Alsatian dogs, which he always had with him. And I went, whoa, what a, this is outrageous. Because it, to be caught wearing that then was jail. Talk about guts. He gave me about, I don't know, 20 snaps and 20 outs. And I'm going, hey, that's great. Thanks, mate. And I walk out the door. As soon as I hit the fresh air, I projectile vomited. And it went, I'll never forget it. I'm going to see it as clear as day. And it's this businessman there in his Mercedes. And I vomited straight across his windscreen, you know. And the next thing, he's just looking at me. And, and then his windscreen wipers started going and he drove off. Anyway, okay, uh, that, that's enough of that. Um, also, when I was there, Regine, my German girlfriend, she went to school with Ralph Hutter's sister, Ralph Hutter, one of the leaders of craft work, and it was his birthday. And I was so excited because we went to Ralph Hutter's sister's place and Ralph, they reckon he was going to show up. He was a very, very private. He, he was not a, not a friendly guy at all. Um, it's well known. And we waited and waited and waited. And I was so disappointed. He didn't even show up for his own birthday party. I was looking forward so much because in Australia, craft work were very, very popular um, with the us underground types. And, man, this, this is like Mecca to me going to Dusseldorf. It's like a Muslim going to Mecca. So a big disappointment. I didn't get to meet the Messiah. But anyway, um, so I don't know. There's millions of other stories. So much happened in Dusseldorf, so many adventures. So to getting to the point, I've bought this, I can highly, highly recommend this wonderful, wonderful book. 
uh, Wolfgang Fleur. I was a robot signed copy. And a great book. Very humorous. It's just a wonderful book. I, I, this is the revised edition. It's not the, you know, it was written over 20 years ago. This is the revised edition. And it's got extra stuff, but it's not just about craft work. It's about the German scene in general. Great book. Anyway, I bought the, this, actually the original, the German copy when I was there. Uh, I think it was called Die Mensch Machine. Um, and it was all in German. I, I, I was going to bring it home, but these nice people let us stay at their house for a few nights because we were brave. We were just bumming off people. We were on sofas. And so I gave the German copy to their young boy who was a really nice kid, nice teenager, really nice kid. And he's sort of going, who's this? I said, I said, this craft work come from Dusseldorf. No one in Dusseldorf gave a shit about craft work. I couldn't believe it. It'd be like going to Liverpool in 1964 and showing someone a Beatles album they go what's that anyway getting off track so yes um, I've got all their albums but I just had to show this uh, and the book and the passport and on one last thing before I get off one of the funny stories in in this book I didn't get to see craft work because I, I um I worked for the richest man in Australia at the time, Kerry Packer, and he, he lost so much money on the racetracks in Mexico. He just sacked a whole bunch of us on Christmas Eve. Yeah, nice guy. He's dead, thank God. But um, so I ended up having to, have to move and work for the public service in Canberra. So I missed seeing craft work. They played Sydney and Melbourne. But it was, I don't know if it was Sydney or Melbourne. I think it was a Melbourne concert. Florian Schneider, rest in peace, um, was having... He, he hated travelling, he hated touring, and he was at his wits' end after going through all these adventures and in America and all over, and he, he was sort of pissed off. So they went to play a gig, and they're all ready, and uh, they, they, you know, they're saying, where's Florian? Where? So they had to sort of, he didn't show up, and the audience were getting rowdy and stomping their feet and slow clapping, and they're sort of trying to play a few noodly notes or something. And then eventually someone looked out into the audience, peeked through the curtains, and Florian Schneider was sitting up the back in the audience. So they ran up and grabbed him and dragged him back stage. And eventually, 20 minutes late, they opened up and played a sort of just a perfunctory performance. So I'm glad I didn't see it because they definitely didn't enjoy it. They weren't enjoying themselves. But I just think that's so funny. And they asked him, so they said, what were you doing? He said, I just wanted to see what, I've never seen craft work live. I just wanted to see what it was like. <laughs> Isn't that funny? He was such a wonderful eccentric, Florian Schneider. There's so many wonderful Florian stories in this book. He's a real character. He's the real, him and Ralph, Ralph of course, are the brains behind the band. But, but Florian's sort of like the master, you know, the mad magician or something. So anyway, happy times I had in Dusseldorf. Target.